Well, hello, Floss Tube. Um, I'm Debbie. Welcome back to Grandma's World. I'm feeling very grateful right now to all Floss Tube creators who have admitted on camera that they've had to take two or three different videos before they had something that they could post on YouTube because this is my second try at this one. Um, just, just little little battles to get this done. So I just decided, eh, so yesterday, I just decided to put it off till today, till things were going a little more smoothly. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. It's been a very good day today. I um, got something done in my major yard renovation project, um, which if you care, one of my other playlists on this channel has some reports about that. Um, and some of them are kind of old um, because I have been spending all my time stitching and not necessarily re recording progress reports. But I got something done this morning that really did um, encourage me at that. I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel with this front yard renovation that I'm doing. And so that boosted my spirits. And then as I was working out front, um, and it was about eight o'clock this morning when I went out and it was quiet and cool and pretty and things were going really well. And I realized that there is, I have this decorative gourd. It's a, it's not really a gourd. It's a piece of pottery, a piece of ceramic that was made in the shape of a gourd and made into a birdhouse. It has a little hole for the door and then it has some pottery decorations on their side of it. At any rate, it has its now second batch of babies in there. And I could listen to them peeping and then I could watch the parents take them things to eat. So that was special. And then I finished what I was doing out there, got cleaned up and was going into town to run some errands and realized it had warmed up by then because um, it was going on noon at that point by the time I left to go on my errands. Um, the Painted Lady butterflies have arrived. We had a migration go through last year. They don't usually come through two years in a row, but they are here. And as I was driving into town, um, they were all over the place in town. So, so that's fun too, to, to get to experience that. So things are, things are going well today. It's a pretty nice day. And I'm hoping that <laughs> this last two recording is a little better as well than it went yesterday. Um, the first thing that I want to remember to share this time, I um, stole a, an idea from Brenda, the handwork maniac, and she was talking about her mania process and she makes a poster. She made a poster with pictures of the project she wanted to do on one poster and then on another poster there were places to move the pictures. Um, as she worked on them, completed them. I wasn't real sure how long that was going to go on, but I love that idea. And I'm a scrapbooker, so I have some materials available to me. And what I decided to do, rather than make a poster, I decided to use my planner um, to keep track of the um, projects. And so um, it was a pretty quick... Um, a pretty quick task to just go into images and cut and paste into a Word document, printed them out onto repositionable paper, and just put the, uh, the picture of each project in the top set of boxes in my planner. So that's been, that has been really fun. Um, I'm, I'm still having some issues. I'll have to remember this for next year. Um, for example, this project, Kathy Haberman's Wild Salt Air that I'm so excited about here, um, where is it, this one, has been moved like three times because I had it in the first week but the fabric didn't get here and so I moved it to the second week and the fabric still didn't get here and I kept moving it um, in hopes that the fabric would show up that day and I could work on it and the fabric wouldn't show up and so I'd have to move it again. So, um, you know, but that's just part you know, if I, I might take a whole year to get ready for Mania next year and, and be collecting this stuff um, a little at a time. And I'm learning things, you know, about how you order fabric online and, and what some of the pitfalls are and what some of the benefits are. And um, I'll talk a little bit about that when I get to haul. 
But any rate, this has worked out really well for me. I'm very happy with it. And um, it's, it's, it's been motivating to not only to have written, you know, I could have written in there, oh, okay, well, this day we're working on the mother of the ocean, but it was um, a lot more inspiring to, to open up the planner. I have the planner usually sitting open for the day uh, and to be inspired by the picture it was a lot of fun. So um, just wanted to share that and say, thank you, Brenda. That was a great idea and I am happy um, Happy that you shared it so that I could steal it. Uh, works in progress. Um, as far, so most of the progress has been on Mania projects and we'll get to those in a minute. But I have continued to work on Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. And what I decided to do was do all the borders on all the boxes first for Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. And then I can go in and do the art in the boxes. Because of my little eye disability that I have, it's really hard for me to count and make sure I'm staying on the same line all the time, that I'm referencing the same set points all the time. And I thought that if I did the boxes first, um, then it would be all contained and I wouldn't have to be worried about where I was in the count on these things. So that's what I'm working on now. I got the center one done and in the last week I finished this one. I got started on this one and realized as I was working on them that I don't really have to finish them one at a time. By putting this box in, this line in here, it tells me how far I have to go up when I go to do this one here. And then because I have it up here, it tells me where to stop here. So it'll be easier to do this box. And the same with the bottom. I know that I'm gonna be coming down here because that line will already be there. And then I will be stopping here because this line is already there. So I'll have some counting to do to finish the bottom. But in the meantime, I still have one, two, three, four boxes to do uh, in the middle and on the top. Um, and I'm, I'm liking the way the colors worked out. Um, I don't know if you were here last time I talked about this, um, that they called for color if you're using the DMC conversion. She, was, she used needle arts, needle, needlepoint silks. My LNS doesn't even carry those and I wasn't interested really in, there's, this thing takes a lot of different colors and I wasn't really interested in playing spe paying specialty color prices for it all. So I wanted to do the DMC conversion. Well, the DMC conversion on this is 310 black for these borders. But in the picture that I fell in love with, they didn't seem black to me. They seemed a dark brown. So to do the middle box, I started with that. I went into my stash and I found a, a color called Swamp Water. I think it's a week's color, but it could be a gentle arts. And I really liked it for this box, but I knew I didn't have enough to do all 10 boxes. So, um, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine boxes, 10, 10 boxes, I think. Um, so I went to my LNS and they didn't have any swamp water. And I ended up buying instead a big, 20 yard hank of a Threadworks color. Um, they're only, sorry, I have hair in my eye. Um, at that shop, they're only uh, displayed by c color number. But after I got it home, I looked up the name of the color because some shops only do color names. And um, the name of the color was um, Rich Chocolate. I said, well, that's mine because I'm a chocolate addict, especially during this stressful time. So um, I've done the top box here in the rich chocolate. I've done the other line in the rich chocolate, um, and I think it's fine. It's not exactly the same as the center box, but I think it works. So I'm not going to even try to redo the center box in the rich chocolate. I'm just gonna keep moving forward. And then when I go to visit my mother, <coughs> I have a project, excuse me, just that I'm just working at, at her house. And I know I've mentioned it before. 
It is a Plum Street Sampler pattern. It's not in this box. Where in the world is it? Huh. Here. Plum Street Samplers. It's called Cape Cod Keeps. Um, I got it at Shepherd's Bush a couple of years ago. They were little needle keeps, little pillows. And I also I fell in love with it. And I'm a, a whale nut and a sea nut, and I'm redoing my house in ocean themes all over the place. Um, so I picked it up, and then I was looking through their fabric and fell in love with this one. And this one just kind of screamed ocean to me. So I really loved this fabric. And after I got home and started looking at it, I realized that what I bought was a piece of 11. And I started calculating out and realized, or came to the conclusion anyway, if I combine these two patterns, put one on top of the other on this 11, then I would have a pretty nice little sampler here for my guest room. So I'm now to the point it says, remember me, friends are we. I finished the whale. I made a bunch of adjustments in design to the bottom. Um, and I pretty much have the bottom of the ocean done. And now I'm putting the me in from the remember me. I'll put the remember up and then it will be time to put in the mermaid up at the top and the waves up at the top. And that will be a pretty nice um, sampler, I think. I think that's going to be great. So I've stitched and frogged and stitched and frogged and stitched and frogged this to get it to this point. And then the lighting changed when daylight savings time came in. The timing of the day was um, all off for me and I haven't been able to stitch since then. But I did buy a light to keep, leave at her house and that is helping a lot. So I'm back to stitching on um, this sampler. So those are my works in progress. I have just something that I do frequently, uh, even I'll, what I do with mania is I get the start done, meaning I count it out, find my starting point and start stitching. Once I start the stitching, I work for a half an hour on that project. Then, for the rest of the evening, I get to decide. Do I want to continue on that project, or do I want to switch over to something else? And what I've been switching over to is Shores of Hawker and Hollow, because I'm so excited about this. Um, so that's how I'm working on these things. Okay, that's works in progress. Haul. I'm going to start haul with something that I didn't buy. I have been making project bags for these mania projects. And I have been having so much fun with this that I'm just gonna share out the bags that don't have a project yet as part of haul. Um, I collect fabric, I'm a quilter, I collect fabric, and I have a lot of fabric that I just loved it, but I never thought I'd use it for anything. And when you go to Joanne or even to a quilt shop and they say, they'll say, what are you gonna do with this? And I, my answer often is, I'm just gonna put it in the museum and visit it because it's so beautiful. Um, maybe I buy a half yard of it, which is what it takes, it turns out, to make one of these project bags. So I'm going to share the ones I don't have a project for yet, starting with this one. I love this fabric. And it's one of those new glitter ones where the glitter doesn't come off all over everything. And I, I actually have bought quite a bit of it, but I don't think I would ever make it into a quilt. So I went ahead and made an envelope out of it. And then this is another one. I love this retro. I grew up in the 50s and 60s, and this was the, these illustrations came out during that time, or this kind of illustration anyway. So these little ducklings, um, they're, looks like kids have left stuff out in the yard and that's what they're playing with. So here's a little elephant pull toy here and I love the little puppy on the gingham tablecloth here and they're playing in the pond over here and they're playing in the saucer the plant saucer here the watering can is here there's a bird house with a bird um, just adorable getting a drink out of the pump 
Really, really love it. Really an adorable design. I'm getting a cramp in my hand. Darn. Um, so yeah, I made that. The other side is the all over design, the companion fabric for that. Um, and what I love the most are these little tiny birds, little black and red birds everywhere. I don't know what bird that is. I guess it's, well, I don't think it's a robin. It has a red breast on it, but I don't think it's a robin. Anyway, super cute. I, here's how crazy I was. I actually went looking for a cross stitch pattern with ducklings that I could kit up so that I would have something to live in this. Um, and I couldn't find anything I liked. Hannah um, Dale has done a set of ducklings that she put on a coffee cup, but there's no cross stitch pattern for it. So I'm just gonna keep my eye out for that. See if it ever shows up in a cross stitch pattern or a cross stitch chart. And then this one, this is a piece of fabric. It was, it was at Joanne, it was wrapped up on a, a cart, they were just inventorying things in and putting them on the shelves and it was still sealed in plastic. And I saw it and I asked the, the woman who worked in the fabric department doing the cutting, can I get some of that? And she goes, of course. So she pulled it down and sold me, I think I got five yards of it, maybe more. Um, I don't know what I'd ever do with it, but it is, I've learned my lesson over time is that if you fall in love with something, if it takes your breath away, you get it because it won't be there when you go back the next time. I know what I want to put in this. So there's that. This side has waterfalls. So yeah, this is like spring or summer, and this is like winter. Somewhere here, I have the cross stitch kit that I bought that was, it's a Disney kit that was put out to commemorate the 50th birthday, the happiest homecoming, they called it, of Disneyland. And we couldn't buy the kit in the 50th birthday year. The only place you could buy that kit in the 50th birthday year was at Disney World, which made no sense to me and no sense to the cast member that I was talking to about it because they had other Disney cross-stitch kits there. They just didn't have that one. Um, and she said, yeah, we don't get that either. We don't understand it. But the next year it showed up and I'm pretty sure I bought it. Um, I just don't know where it is. So as I go through this renovation of my house, if when I come across it, it's going into that bag because that bag screams Disney to me, but it's not Disney. All right, so those are my bags I've been making. I do have other haul. Um, again, Handwork Maniac finished this and I fell in love with it. Um, so my degree is in history. I taught history for 25 years, American history. And one of the classes I took to get my degree was a class in historic preservation. And we toured a lot of Victorian homes all up and down the state of California as part of that class. And so I think, as I, if I'm remembering correctly, this is called an Italianate style house. And when I saw her finished um, version of it, I just fell in love with it. I really loved it. And so I bought it, it came, it was, I could get it on Amazon for less than $15, as I recall. And it's a kit. Um, I think I'm gonna buy replacement floss up front because I'm not confident they've given me enough for it and I don't wanna have to do it after the fact. Um, but I'm not gonna get to it this year anyway. Here's the Navy Aida. Um, but I love the way she finished it and I'll, I'll just, <laughs> I showed it to my mom the other day and she goes, I couldn't, wouldn't ever have guessed you would buy something like that. And I just said, you know, it surprised me too, but I really do love it. And I really do like to look at it. So that's what we're gonna do for a while. Just gonna put it away with the rest of them. Um, and maybe I'll be so efficient with mania, keeping up with mania projects that I will actually get to it next, next, next May. Um, I've been collecting a lot of fabric, trying to, to get projects kitted up. Um, so one that came in, this was from 123 Stitch. I had ordered this fabric 
from Picture This Plus and it didn't come and it didn't come and it didn't come. I ordered it in February and it finally got here, I think last week. Um, it got to me in time to start the project I wanted to do on it, but in the meantime, I had reordered it from 123 Stitch because it was taking so long to get it from the dyer. Um, and so I have extra of it now. It's called Woodland. Um, and you'll see it because it's one of the projects I worked with last week. And then another one that I just got from them, it's called Touch of Blue. It's an Aida. I work only really pretty much just working on Aida, either 16 or 18. This is a 14 though. Um, and it's for a Christmas by the Bay Santa um, Christmas piece she has. Hers was on gray and I went for not a pure gray as much. It has just a tiniest bit of aqua in it. Uh, it's not even as blue as it's looking on the camera to me. It, it is looking more aqua to me. So that's, um, I was happy to get that. I'll be able to start that next week. Um, starting, well, I started on the 21st. It's Christmas time in Mania. And the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24, and 25, I have Christmas starts to do. So that will be one of them this week. And then after that, the 26th to the 31st, there'll be Halloween starts. Um, and then this, I have a lot to learn about ordering fabric and buying fabric online. Um, I got turned on by um, EJ on Sunshine Stitchers to Be Stitch Me, a uh, fabric dyer. Um, very happy, pretty, uh, just really happy with the, the pro, uh, experience of working with her. I have joined her um, Fabric of the Month, and I think last week I posted the um, Dreamsicle. That was the Fabric of the Month from her. That was great. And then I also had ordered a, pro a piece of fabric from her. Um, actually, I ordered four pieces of fabric from her. And then I did her Friday night, F she calls it FNFN Friday Night Fight Night, and I was able to buy more fabric on that. Somehow I ended up with four pieces of opalescent fabric and I don't like opalescent fabric <laughs> so I don't know how that happened. I'm just going to have to be more careful. I think these are the ones I ordered straight away and I think I just clicked the wrong button each time. So um, this is Earth in its opalescent version Um, April showers. Island blue. All of which I love, except I don't like the glitter. I don't like the opalescent. And mummy. I mean, who in the world would do mummy and it's an opalescent? But apparently I did. So she probably was shaking her head going, oh, you're not going, you really want this? But I, I hit the wrong button. Totally my mistake. I have reordered the earth in the plane, non-opalescent, and then I don't know what I'll do with the other ones. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one either, but I know I wanted it in a flat and not a shiny. Um, one thing I'm learning from this experience of ordering fabric online is that you get it and you go, that's not what I wanted. And a week later, the project pops up that you go, oh, that's going to look really good on that. For example, this ocean blue, I have been deba debating island blue, it's called. Um, there's a mermaid. It's not the Mirabilia mermaid. It's the other company that does a similar, ornate, intricate, female, mostly female characters. And they have a mermaid that I've been really debating over whether I want to do or not. And I thought, you know, actually, <laughs> she would look really good on this. So we'll just keep debating that. And then the one that, that I absolutely, definitely came out just what I wanted was this one. And it just has a number, 196. Um, and I 
I don't think, I think I might have the project in the bag waiting for this, but I'm not sure about that. Um, so she, it's, she's delightful. The, the service is fast. The game is fun. Um, the ordering process is easy. I just have to be more careful about how I'm ordering it. And I hope she doesn't think I'm too big of a pest, but I did order Earth again. And I wrote, sent her an email. I said, would you just check and make sure I did it right this time? Because I did it wrong the last time and I really don't want a whole bunch of opalescent fabric. So if you wouldn't mind just double checking, make sure I ordered the plain earth. And then I'll know in the future that that was the right way to do it. And I'll make sure that I don't make those mistakes again. Also in haul, I have these two primitive hair grief um charts now i sewed you down so why are you fighting me um that i wasn't able to get all of the floss for um and so haul wise i did i ordered from two different people from jen stitching niche and then one called beehive in Let's see, because this is the second time I'm doing this, I may have already eliminated that thing. But it was called Beehive, and I want to say it was in Pittsburgh. Um, but at any rate, between the two, I ended up with everything I needed. So I got all of my uniform blue. I got um, really just pretty much everything I needed here. 7055. Yes, I have lots of uniform blue. This was the funny one. This is the Banker's Gray. Nobody had this. I kept trying to buy it and try it and buy it and try it and buy it. And then finally I said, well, it's just going to be the last thing I put in. I'll do a substitute. In fact, when I went to my LNS, we came up, you know, we didn't even know what color it is, but we tried different, like that would have been an okay, you know, conversion if I needed it got home was going through a different collection a different kit for something else and i had everything i needed for this and that's when i remembered jen stitching niche that i had gotten all of this stuff from her weeks ago so that's cool i'm ready to to really move ahead on this one and i thought i'd share this i bought some rings for these drop style flosses and I couldn't get them open. They were like binder rings. And with my arthritis in my hands, I couldn't do that movement to get them open. So I bought some of these things. They were less than $5, as I recall. Certainly less than 10 for eight of these. Do I have them sitting here? At any rate, you just unscrew them. Um, yeah, here we go. So you unscrew them, and it's a steel cable that goes flat, and then you can fill it up and screw it together again, and that gives you the ring. And they're real easy to move your colors around on. And they would hang just fine. The way most people are displaying their drop colors, that would hang just fine for that. So I was happy to find those. And then there were more colors. I think I already showed both of these primitive hair pieces um, in last week's video. I just want to show that I got all the colors I needed between Beehive and Jen Stitching Niche. She had everything I needed. They had everything I needed. So I'm ready to go on that one. All right. So my Mania report, I've had so much fun with this. Mania is just a blast, isn't it? Let me move this a little bit. Yeah, it's so much fun and I, really do love having a schedule for this. I'm not sure how I'm going to proceed after the 31st. 
Um, but we'll see what I end up with and then I'll make decisions about how to continue through the year. Um, really going to try to avoid some of the other things, the Christmas in July and, and I mean right now Disney's doing halfway to Halloween so I said well I'm glad I have some Halloween projects to do for Mania. Um, but I'm going to try to avoid some of those where you're starting new things because I certainly started enough. This was from a week or so ago and I don't think I said anything about it. Um, this is another Sunshine Stitchers inspiration for me. Uh, Shelia did the whole set of these. There are four seasons. I have the charts for all four. It's Sisters and Best Friends. I bought them in 2003 when they came out from Shepherd's Bush up in Utah. And I, um, she really inspired me to bring them out and get back to work on them. I almost purged them. I almost threw them out or donated them or whatever. But um, yeah, she, hers turned out so beautifully. And she was, uh, she was doing the thing that a lot of you are doing where she finishes it and put, puts magnets on it so that she can put it on the same display piece and change the seasons out, and that's what I want to do with it. I want to be able to change it by season. And this was what I got done in my start. Now to me a start is, I haven't measured anything, I haven't counted anything, I am working with the fabric first, deciding where I want to start, counting that out, and then I get going on it. And then once I get going on it, I work for half an hour, for 30 minutes. And if I have length left on my needle at the 30 minute mark, I finish it. Then I get to decide, do I want to continue to work on this or do I want to um, um, move on and do something else? Like, do I want to go back to Shores of Hawkrun Hollow or, or some other project that, that I already started? And so um, in this case, um, I decided to go on and, and work on something else, so we'll see. Um, we'll just see how it goes, what, what I feel like. Um, but I love the colors. I love variegated, um, and this does have some variegated in it, but this is from a time, these early 2000s, 1990s, 1980s, is really before the big overdye movement really gets going, and um, that they got that shading in by using lots of different um, values of the same colorways. So um, this one has a lot, <laughs> it has a lot of different colors in it to get all of those different shades in. All right, like I said, I think that was from week before last, but I didn't, I don't think I shared it out. So for last week, the first thing I did was this one, and this is one of my Garin Toten bags. I am really enjoying being part of their Bag of the Month Club. Um, I'm planning to keep it going for about a year, and then moving out of the club and giving someone else a chance at these. But it is such a nice surprise every month to get this beautiful bag. Uh, they, they are clever in their design and in their choice of fabrics, and so I've really been enjoying these. This one had a little bit of a Celtic feel to it for me, and so this is where I went with the Nimue, the Swing, which is a French chart, French company. Um, I have a friend in France, a friend in France, uh, we've been cross-stitch friends on first on Yahoo groups. We, that's how we met was in a Yahoo group and it's been a long time since Yahoo and Yahoo groups. Um, and there are four or five of us that are still connected to each other that met during that group. Um, trying to remember Cheryl Brown, Wendy, um, Shilo, Melissa, Samantha, and um, I want to say there's another one. But then anyway, it was Shilo in France. I said, hey, how do you pronounce this anyway? And she said it's, and she wrote it. She says, it's Nemieux, but it's the French U. 
and she was going to share a piece of some something something with me where I could hear the French U and hasn't gotten around to it yet so I'm just winging it there but this is where I used the woodland that picture this plus sent me so I've gotten this far with the baby but this is the one that it's also picture this plus but I got it from um, one two three stitch and it's slightly lighter so I may start over on this one as it's the same feel to the color that dark forest uh, lots of blue in the screen in both of them but I have a feeling that baby is going to show up better on this one. So I think I'm just going to start it over again. I wanted to start that for Mother's Day, but again, I was waiting for fabric, so I had to go at a different time. And then this one came up this week, and this is another. I think this is the latest Garin Toten bag. I love things with wings, and this is just stunning. It goes beautifully. It may be living permanently in my new guest room, which is kind of these colors. And I started, I finished my um, the Well and Stitch piece. I've already shown that. And then I'm using the leftover fabric to use a be to make a beast cornu. I need a pin cushion for my sewing room. And this is um, Tiny Modernist. It's the Butterfly Beast Cornu. And this is another company that um, Sunshine Stitchers turned me on to. They had other things by Tiny Modernist that sent me to checking them out. And I love this thing. So I got to start on that. And I'm just reusing the flosses and fabric from my version of um, <laughs> Oh, come on. Let Joy Be Unconfined is what the one that I chose to do, the Blue Flowers contribution. So I got started on that. Oh, there's something. I'm also using, I have some of these little notions bags from Garden Token Bags, and I'm using this one for all these projects. Um, I couldn't find it because it was in that bag. All right. This, I made this bag. It's butterflies with a metallic um, highlights. And I have had this pattern since the 90s. Give me a second, because I'm doing two different charts out of the same Stony Creek book. So let me get this out. Stony Creek um, Friends of Nature is what it's called. And for this one, I'm doing this um, butterfly bell pull. Uh, it's just a long, narrow butterfly collection thing. Um, and um, I don't remember when I bought this, but look, it was $6.95 in the United States for a whole book. You don't find that anymore. Um, and it was sold by Leisure Arts because the Leisure Arts tag is on the back. So I'm guessing maybe at, at Joanne. But I it... it sat in a file for a really long time and then I wanted to work on it and I was trying to kit it up. There's lots of colors in it. Um, and in the book, in, in I'll share something else in a minute. But for this one, the color, some of the colors they called for it for were called um, Glisten Gloss. And I went to this needle workshop in the next town and asked for Glisten Gloss and the salesperson offended me because um, she didn't have it. She didn't know what it was. And rather than say, oh, I don't know what that is. I don't have that. She said, well, how old is that? And kind of snotty, how old is that book anyway? And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't, 
I said, well, I've had it for a while. Um, but anyway, I ended up leaving the shop without buying anything because I thought that was unprofessional. And I ended up taking it up to Utah on a trip with me and went to Shepherd's Bush and asked the same question of the same book. And their response was very different because they are magical at Shepherd's Bush. And their answer was, well, that was a product. We don't carry that product. We don't think we can get that product anymore. Let us show you a substitute. And so that's where I met Krennic for the first time. Apparently Gliss and Gloss was a form of metallic. And so I got the, the colors I needed of the Krennic to do the butterflies. So I have gotten a start on that. Not a big start. But I had already done one length of green and I put in another length of green and now I've started working on the white, which doesn't show up real well on this fiddler, but it's Stony Creek. And I know that there is going to be lots of backstitch on this and that's going to bring it all out. So I'm not really worried about that. This hand keeps cramping up. I did about two hours of work in my yard. I'm digging up a lawn, digging up a, my old Bermuda grass lawn. And I did about 15 square feet this morning. <laughs> and my hand from pulling, I dig it with a, it's called a Nomad Root Slayer Shovel, which is an awesome tool. I can dig under the roots and then I pull them out and knock all the excess dirt off. And I think I took it a little too far this morning. Because it was so much fun getting rid of Bermuda grass. I hate Bermuda grass. So it's been wonderful. So that was one day. And then the next day I was back in the same book. And I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to continue with the butterflies right now. And so I'm going to leave the book in this envelope, this bag. This is one of my favorite bags that I made. Isn't that fabric gorgeous? And this was one of those fabrics. I'm in the quilt shop. I'm just hanging out and I spotted it and I had to have some of it. Um, it's for a quilt, a kaleidoscope quilt. And you buy eight yards of it at a time. And that's not what I wanted. I just wanted like one of her remnant size pieces just to have some of it. So it's made the perfect bag for this. And I'm working on this sampler. It's called the insect sampler. So it has the bunny in the middle with um, strawberries, I think. Daisies and strawberries and a butterfly. Maybe something else. They may not be strawberries because of the way they're hanging there. any rate, but it's the insects that have me all excited because each letter has an insect. And I decided not to do the half hour when I started this. I was gonna go until I finished one of the insects. So A is for ant. And he's finished. And then you see the way the A's are shaded from dark to light, from the top of the letter to the bottom of the letter. That A is no more than three quarters of an inch tall, but it has five different colors from the 435 colorway in it to get that shading in there. Um, and I, I love it. I've always loved the way they do that shading with all those different colors. So I'm excited to keep going on this one. And it's going to be in my year bag where I just keep it out and work on it all year, my year basket. When I get my renovations done, I will have a second room. It's going to be part guest room and part entertainment room. And I'm going to move my television into it and have another comfortable chair with a good light and a basket full of these um, envelopes full of projects that I can work on. 
And then I've been waiting, like I say, for the fabric to come in to do Wild Salt Air, the Kathy Haberman piece. And that was supposed to happen this past week and the fabric still has not come in. So I moved one of the Christmas pieces up in the week um, into the slot where that one should have been. And it's this one, it's from Bobby's Books, um, part of her Bride's Tree series. And it's called Giving, and I believe it's the November piece. So the thing with the Bra Brooks Books Bride's Tree series is that you're supposed to do one of these every month and then give them to the new bride for her Christmas tree. And I'm not going to do that, but I did, there were five of them that I really liked. And I have, I think I've already mentioned in, in one floss tube, a whole collection of Santas in this pinkish red color. So when I saw this one, I decided that I wanted to get him done and put him on an easel or a frame with a stand or something and put him with all those Santas. So what I got done on him was the fur trim going down the front of his robes. And I think it goes this way. Um, having some issues with the colors, I'm using the DMC conversion rather than get all of the um, what was she using? Crescent colors here? Crescent colors, Belle Soie silk. And I didn't, again, I didn't want to go and get all of those to do this when I have quite a lot of DMC. So I did the DMC conversions. And they're okay, but I think those Belle Soie silks, somebody can correct me, are they variegated? Because what I'm seeing is variegation happening in the colors that I really like, and it's not coming through in the flats, in the plain DMCs. So I may need to do some adjusting on this before I go too much further. I probably have, um, yeah, I could probably stick with the DMCs for some of it. And then for some of the ones where I, I really notice it, like with the pinks, the dark pink, I probably have a Weeks or a Gentle Arts that already does that, has that look to it that I like. So we'll see. What, do you, what is it EJ says? It's just thread. You can take it out if you don't like it. So what happened to your design? All right, so that is Mania for this week and the rest of the report, floss tube report. And um, like I said, I'm having a lot of fun with mania. It's, I'm having issues, emotional issues with the COVID-19. Um, I'm an introvert anyway. One wouldn't think that I would have a problem with solitude and that's not really the problem I'm having. It's the enforced isolation that I'm having a problem with so that it makes it difficult to, to justify running to Target and wandering around for an hour. Or um, like I'm, I'm in the middle of this renovation and I have not gone to Home Depot to get the decorative colors I need to finish painting this room. And so I haven't moved ahead with the room since I can't do that. Or have my son over. My son is supposed to come and take some cupboards down in that room and I can't really proceed very far with it until the cupboards come down and I repair the wall. And um, he hasn't been here. I have not been in contact, physical, the physical, his physical company now for nine weeks because he's out of work and his wife's out of work and they're holed up at home with a two-year-old that they are not going to risk for anything. And I'm the one who does the shopping, most of, a lot of the shopping and the picking up the food and all of that for my 88 year old mother who lives with my sister, or actually my sister and her son live with my mother and my nephew's girlfriend who has been in and out of the house as part of their pod ever since before this started 
um, just put on got put on quarantine because someone in her realm, because she was still working, um, tested positive for COVID-19. She doesn't know who it was and she doesn't know that she has it, but because she's been exposed, she now has to stay quarantined for two weeks. And since it is one of those diseases where you can have it for several days and pass it on to people for several days before you have any symptoms, um, we don't know if any of us have been exposed or not. So I would, even if my son were to say, hey mom, okay, I'm ready to come and, and take those cupboards down, I'd say no, I'd leave it leave it for a couple more weeks because we're not sure until we're sure that she's COVID free. We don't want to take any chances with that precious baby. So that's what's bothering me is that it, there's a lot of fear. Um, there's a lot of fear connect, you know, kind of connected with all of this, isn't there? Um, so that's it for me for today. Um, I'm having a very nice day so far. It is Saturday, and so there's a new uh, Priscilla and Chelsea video out. I've noticed that. Sunshine Stitchers, Stitchers will pop today sometime, and that means, and I'm done with my day, pretty much. I've done my garden work. I've been on my errands. I'm, I'm ready to just put my feet up and finish my day out and spoil myself. Have a little extra spoilage this weekend because my sister has... Monday off and she offered me one of these Memorial Day weekend days that I usually go and visit my mom. She said, why don't you take an extra day? Why don't you take an extra day at home? So I, she gave me Sunday. I usually go there on Sunday so that she can have a day off, but she's going to have Monday off instead. And so, um, I, I keep, you know, reminding myself, Ooh, <laughs> I get a holiday tomorrow. So um, it makes it even even easier for me to just say, you know what, I'm spoiling myself today. I'm just gonna kick my feet up and stitch as long as my hands will last. I may even take a Tylenol to help me get through it. So I um, hope you're having a, an honorable Memorial Day weekend. I hope we all take a moment to be grateful uh, to those who lost their lives um, in the service of their country and at the same time, share some love out there with somebody, um, one way or another. Um, that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye.